What up? Today is July the 5th, 2021, and I'm your host, Deontay Curry here at Turn Up the Volume Podcast. We've been away for two weeks, y'all. I've been getting some much-needed rest, uh, revamping some things. My wife and I have been doing some wonderful things, um, some business ventures, and just taking time out to relax and, and just really enjoy life. And I've been in school doing different things, and so um, we got a lot to talk about today, y'all. Uh, I have the manhood panel on today. I got one of the manhood panel. We waiting for our other brother to come on if he can get on. Uh, but I got none other than my good brother Trey Daniel, the good Reverend out of ATL. Trey, how you doing, Trey? What's going on, D? I'm good yeah, to be. me. <laughs> me and Trey was talking before we went live, and uh, I was telling him we were talking about MLK. He and I, we love MLK. Uh, Thurman and a lot of other theologians and things of that nature. Um, we were talking about uh, the King Center. And so um, I had, me and my wife, we had to do like an emergency impromptu trip over the weekend to drop my son off, my bonus son, down Jacksonville, Florida over the weekend. And that's like a nine hour drive. And uh, on the way, you know, while we were down there, we got a chance to quickly kind of uh, stop in Atlanta to see the King Center. And so uh, we got some footage. From that, and so next week we're going to be doing a special edition of uh, Turn Up the Volume podcast live from Atlanta, and I'm going to be showing y'all all the footage and the different things that I got to experience. And so it was, if you know any anybody who knows me personally knows the connection that I have that Dr. King plays in my life personally. And so uh, uh, y'all be looking for that next week. We're going to be airing it sometime next week. Um, but nonetheless, Trey, we got a lot to talk about, man. So much has happened. Yeah. So, so, so much has happened, man. I mean, right. from uh, Juneteenth, the passing of Juneteenth, uh, mm-hmm. that becoming a federal holiday. And uh, we also had the 4th of July that happened yesterday. But I want to start out with this one. Uh, last week, <laughs> we had... <laughs> last week, where is it at? Where is it at? Last week, we had some breaking news. <laughs> and that breaking news was... Bill Cosby's sentence was overturned, mm. and he was immediately released from prison. Mm-hmm. And um, people went crazy, Trey. People went crazy. Some people were for it. Some people were against it. Some people were happy, ecstatic. Others were offended and um, empathetic and sympathetic to those who were or who are victims of sexual assault. Trey, what, what was your what was your first reaction when you when you heard that news? Because I. Before I said anything publicly, and I have to do this because of the platform that I have, I try not to just say things out of the side of my neck because of the platform that I have. And you have to be mindful of other people and the, the experiences they go through. And you want to make sure that every word that you say uh, is not misconstrued and t- or taken out of context. So uh, I, I I waited before I said some, anything. Uh, but what was your thoughts when you first heard what happened? Man, um honestly honestly yeah i was i was shocked and i was surprised man um i was talking to my wife of course you know i'm i'm barely rarely on social media but of course the news breaking news it was highlighted through all types of media outlets and so forth so i was just surprised number one um not you know necessarily about the actual identification of bill cosby but just you know the friend of a black man (laughs) and nonetheless right so 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 the friend of a black man and how it was just overturned and and thrown out yeah he did serve some time i believe they said it was up to he served two years two years from his almost three years yeah yeah so um number one that was that was like the first thing for me it was just you know shocking news but as I, you know, did my research, dug a little deeper, I was, you know, sympathetic to, of course, the victims more than anything. Yeah. Just understanding, like, I get it. I know Bill Cosby, right? This this paramount figure, right? He really, his creation of his show really showed us uh, what a successful African-American uh, family and nexus could look like. And for that, we're grateful, right? But I've always had these conversations with my friends because during this generation or even just the the time frame that we're living in we have the ability now to critique to critique more than Mm -hmm. ever uh i'm not a fan of the cancel culture um um type of movement but just the critique opportunity for us to critique more than ever so with that being said 
I was able to look at that and try to see how what is a way in which I can separate the art from the artist, right? Yes. So I am thankful for the art, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we we are still met with this tension within the artist, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just not going out there publicly praising or you know <laughs> solidifying and saying congratulations, thank you that he, that he's free, but at the same time being responsible with like you said the platforms that you hold. Yeah. You know, just being yeah. responsible. Yeah, and, and you know it was very interesting because I said something on social media after I reflected and and now uh my wife, she is like my accountability partner and so mm -hmm. um she's always reminding me to be mindful of what I say before I post certain things on social media. You know, because you don't want people, because anybody could be following me and, and, and to not, you know, you don't want to um, exactly. be misunderstood in many different ways. And so shout out to my wife for doing that, you know, and I have to kind of think twice before I say certain stuff to not always say the first thing that comes to my mind sometimes, because that could be very damaging. Like you see people like Kevin Hart, he posted something like 10 years ago and then you see how I came back and, you know, and, exactly. and, and caught up and exactly. caught up with him. And so, and, and I really had to think about it in, in retrospect and really reflect on it. And I said something to our fellow preachers and pastors uh, in the body of Christ. And I said, be mindful, excuse me, of how you celebrate um, the release of Bill Cosby. Because unbeknownst to a lot of us, we have victims of sexual assault who sit in mm -hmm. our churches mm -hmm. who are listening to us and looking for us and looking up to us and are getting their healing from us as leaders. And when they see us celebrate, they could possibly be looking at us celebrate somebody who violated somebody else or who or who violated the likes of the, you know what i'm saying the, the likes it, of somebody it, that may have yeah. violated them and so while you're celebrating the celebrity you're not necessarily celebrating the, in, the innocence of a man because ultimately no matter how you look at it even though he got off because the the prosecution or the government went about convicting him the wrong way nonetheless there was a deposition where he admitted to some stuff you know mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. that he admitted to having extramarital affairs whether they were consensual or what have you um he 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 did some stuff that he should not have done and so my point was that we as preachers and, and believers we have to be consistent in our theology right and so what i mean by that is you can't be upset at the homosexual or, or, or condemning of the homosexual, you know, in, in, your, in your theology is against the homosexual, but yet over mm -hmm. here you're excusing somebody who sexually assaulted, you mm -hmm. know, pe women. So you have to be consistent if that's what right. your theology demands. And so um, th there was a lot of preachers, uh, uh, a lot of people that were going off. And I say going off, I was just like, man. And, and, and so it, it was very shocking to me. Um, do you think that his legacy is tarnished now with all of this that's, that has gone on with him? Um, as, I, as I said before, it's really about, you know, how you look at things. If you're able to separate the art from the artist um, yeah. or not only that, or, you know, if you're just of this nature of this culture now, who's with the cancel culture, right? Yeah. We were, we were placing people on um, pedestals, but really realizing that they are human and more than that, they're human. They are commit committing some of these, you know, atrocities that are really like, <laughs> really, really <laughs> bad, right? Like, yeah. re like really, really bad. Not just some, um, you know, white lies, some, some, some small things, but some things that have impacted people, impacted generations of people. Yeah. Uh, so we, we just got to be mindful of that. I think um, even with the Felicia Rashard. Incident, oh, right? Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Of, of her celebrating his release. You know, there was even a, um, you know, a, a conversation surrounding that that wasn't as pleasant with another, you know, high, how high, high touted celebrity woman. Um, I call her Aunt Viv. Um, my, my her name, her official name is, is slipping me, but um, even with oh, uh, oh, J uh, Jan Janet Hubert. Yes, yes, yes. Fresh person. Yes. The original ain't Viv, you understand? A absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so mm -hmm. I mean, it's <sighs> this day and age, it, it, it makes it very tricky. Uh, but it's a slippery slope. 
Yeah, but for I mean, but for us who came up or was able to watch the Cosby show and just watch, mm-hmm. you know, the different things that Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, sorry, was able to give us in his creative genius. Um, I think we kind of got to, you know, weigh the good and the bad and not take everything um, from 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 a perspective of. Per, I, ah, I want to say, you know, because even with this conversation, it's like, yeah. you know, I don't I don't want to just erase everything that he has done based on the mistakes in which he's made. I'm, I'm thinking about even back to um, Ta-Nehisi Coates and his book in which Mm -hmm. he talks about these respectability politics, right? Like Bill Cosby was this public figure, but yet he's calling out African-American men for these respectability politics and Mm -hmm. pulling up your pants, all this other stuff. But, you know, you you just gotta, you just gotta take things with a grain of salt. You said something earlier, you were talking about cancel culture. And let me tell you what I said, Mm -hmm. I guess, cancel culture, because initially I thought about initially I was excited about cancel culture because when you hear about Donald Trump back then when he was in office and Me too, he, he was all in, that. he yeah. was on Twitter going crazy saying all kind of subliminal subtle racist stuff and um I was saying to myself thank God somebody didn't cancel him off of Twitter like he can't even go back but then I thought about it. I was like well should we really celebrate cancel culture because that could be any one of us you know on the other side meaning well and then get canceled, and so it's, it it, mm-hmm. it becomes easy to get canceled because if they can do that to Donald Trump, they can do that to the the slightest person, you know that that may mean well and may be saying some things, but just because somebody doesn't like what you say, even though you what you may have said is the right thing, and 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 the and the best thing that probably everybody else is scared to say, you get canceled because you say what what other people are scared to say, and so uh, I don't know, I I think that. In retrospect, I think cancel culture, I, I don't think we should really be celebrating cancel culture too much. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how where you sit with that, but, you know, that cancel culture, I don't. It becomes yeah, tricky. I think it's I think it's just, you know, the, the days and the times that we live in, because, yeah. I mean, because, <laughs> you know, some of our some of our I mean, it, it's crazy because the black community is really crazy. And this is why I keep just bringing up and reiterating this point of separating the art from the artist. Because some of our aunts, mm-hmm. man, they, they're, they're still jamming out to these R. Kelly tapes, man. And, and you know. Right. <laughs> right. Like, like I had an auntie. It, her, I had my aunt. Her favorite artist was R. Kelly back in the day, that's, man. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying, man. It's, it's I haven't really, played not one Trap in the Closet. I thought it was creative. You know, I love Trap in the Closet <laughs> because it was soap opera. You know, mm-hmm. but I haven't played R. Kelly. And since all that stuff happened, you know, I, I just have it. You know, right. and, and I think and what... what what has impacted is, is that because I have a whole daughter now, so it's like mm. <laughs> I don't know. But you, but, you, but <laughs> remove it, remove it, right? Remove it from from you know the 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 tension amongst the sexes, right? And yeah. just really just sit back and realize like some of these people' livelihoods are necessarily uh, being destroyed on the premise mm. of a group of people. Yeah. Playing, and this is where we get spiritual, right? A group of play, yeah. people really playing God and judging, placing judgment on another person's life, mm-hmm. which can, quote unquote, like you said, cancel them. I'm even reminded of, you know, the Kevin Hart scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. In which he was, quote unquote, canceled and he got dropped from, I think, what what, what award show he was about to do? The Academy Awards or something like that. Was it the Oscars or the Oscars? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Won, I thought it was the Oscars. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's the same thing. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, just all of all of that happening is is really just interesting to me in this this day and age of how easy it is for people to just cancel people or for mm-hmm. people to just you know disrupt other other people's livelihoods off the simple fact of not agreeing or um, not understanding their perspective. Now, like you said, some people <laughs> does deserve to be canceled, but you know. Nonetheless, but I where do we draw the line, though? Right. We're is there a line history. that should be drawn? Like, it, mm-hmm. I guess if your language becomes not just offensive, but when it becomes harming or harmful to other people, then at that point, when, when you're advocating harm, violence, I mm-hmm. think then we should take a step back and say, okay, maybe we need to reevaluate some stuff. And, and concerning cancel culture, if you want to call it something different, but 
Um, just because you get offended every five seconds, I don't think you should cancel somebody because somebody right. says something you don't like. But when that when that language becomes harmful and harm is done as a result of what you said, mm-hmm. then we need to reevaluate some stuff. So I, it, it, that cancel culture is we we definitely, especially in, in our communities and in America, we really need to reevaluate that and uh, how we go about that. But you know, that's a whole. Uh, that's a whole rabbit hole that we can go down, you know, cancel yeah. culture. And um, sure. because the thing is, OK, Bill Cosby's out now, you know, uh, his sentence was vacated, but, you know, he wasn't exonerated technically. And, and, and that's really unpack what happened for a lot of people, because some people don't even understand why he was let mm-hmm. out. He was let out because he had a, a deposition where he was that given was immunity, true. where if he told the truth, he could not. He was promised by the prosecutor that he would not be charged. Um, with what he said, with what he admitted to, like the fifth, like the fifth. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, and and that's very important because some people say, well, that was a different prosecutor. This is another prosecutor. You got to understand the prosecutor. That's an office. It's not a person. It's an office. And so mm-hmm. even if somebody else comes behind, you know, that's an office that they had to honor that that kind of thing. And so it, you know, you, you have to be mindful that hey, even though he admitted to certain things, right? He admitted that he did what he did um you Mm -hmm. can't you can't promise somebody something in the office of a prosecution and you know in the court of law and then pull it back and then try to prosecute and use that stuff against them like that that's that every day we have african americans who are violated in that way with where their rights are violated and they are serving time because um the prosecution or what have you or the law did not do what it was supposed to do and and go by the book and so um mm-hmm. they they mm-hmm. underhandedly did a lot of stuff just to convict him i think the prosecutor he ran his whole campaign of trying to of, of saying hey i'm gonna get bill cosby as a yeah. as a campaign slogan i think it was yep. something like that so um it was a victory for law but it wasn't a victory for bill cosby in my opinion because he wasn't innocent you know, mm-hmm. and so it, it it was never a victory for him as a as a person, and so um, it, it's it, it it becomes very tricky because it's like, well, he's out now, and so what does this do in the future? What is this a slap on the wrist? Like, um, you know, is right, right? <laughs> it was it a slap on the wrist or was it not a slap on the wrist? And you know, uh, so it is. It, because ultimately, I think he was up for parole, but he didn't get it because he wouldn't go through some of the classes that they wanted him to go through with. So he mm-hmm. was maintaining his innocence, you know, <laughs> in his eyes. But I mean, I think I think what it was is in his mind, this was consensual stuff that he was doing. Um, mm-hmm. But in their eyes, they were being taken advantage of. So so it's like you gotta. Uh, you see one side against the other, but you know, nonetheless, that like that was breaking news last week. And then, um, uh, cut was it two weeks ago? We were talking, uh, you, me, you, and James were talking offline, and we were going to do a show about the Derek Chauvin sentence, and that was big yeah. too because that was mixed opinions and mixed feelings. Uh, mm-hmm. 22 and a half years is what he got. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that was enough? <laughs> absolutely absolutely not um I, th- I think what did they say that's the maximum that he was able to get being a first-time offender and all of that um even though the i think they were pushing for 30 years if I'm that's not what that's what the prosecution wanted was 30 years. they wanted that max that he could get they wanted that max okay okay yeah. but yeah he he wound up receiving 22 and a half with the option of having parole once I think two third of a sentencing being served, meaning uh, possibly fifteen years. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, it's it, it's once again us playing judge and jury. I mean, a person's life hangs in the balance. I mean, mm-hmm. not his life. I'm saying, as far as George Floyd's like George Floyd, he can't get his life back. He's, right. He cannot get his life back. So right. for us to you know be playing judge and jury and for someone else um, to to basically be going through a judicial process that 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 does not highlight the fact that george floyd cannot come back Mm -hmm. and they're only giving him 22 and a half years um yeah that's that's not enough for me that's not enough for my community that's not enough for george floyd's family um and just all of the trauma and the tension that you know has has been a cause of this action from him so Mm -hmm. no 
Yeah. You know what's interesting, right? And so um, I also said, I don't know if I posted this, but I had this in my notes, but I'm going to say it here because it's my platform. I can say what I want to say. Mm-hmm. But I had a thought, uh, Trey, and that was the same law that let Bill Cosby out off of what some people call a technicality mm-hmm. is the same law that could possibly let Derek Chauvin out for technicality. And here's why. If you remember at the very end of the trial, um, they were wrapping up and the defense was trying to get the judge to vacate the the, 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 the trial off of the fact that he said that the jury uh, was affected by public opinion because they had access to the news. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and then Judge Peter Cahill, he said, he said, you have an opportunity to appeal because, you know, some stuff that Maxine Waters had said yeah. um and so i thought about that i said huh what if they actually do appeal and that comes up wow. and the judge can vacate his sentence because of some stuff technicalities because the jury wasn't sequestered a technicality or another technicality because a black woman in office said some stuff that was not in Derek Chauvin's favor that could have mm-hmm. ultimately supposedly affected the opinion of the jury so the same law and a lot of people celebrated bill cosby getting out because of these technicalities but those same technicalities could apply to Derek chauvin and so we have to be mindful of that um because i believe he's going to appeal he's going to appeal his sentence and he's going to bring up those technicalities um that the fact that they weren't sequestered and all this other kind of stuff and and the stuff that political officials may have said but i don't know but but i that that's that's what really came up in my mind when I thought about this whole Bill Cosby stuff and Derek Chauvin being sentenced is that he could very well have his sentence vacated too if if things play out that way. Yeah, I, I, I that that had popped in my mind as mm-hmm. well. Um, but the fact that if he does appeal, it has to go to a higher court. I don't necessarily yeah. seeing it see see it happen just because of the publicity that has been taking place of mm-hmm. surrounding this trial, surrounding these incidents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as as we said, everybody knows about this. It has literally been um given to us on a silver platter as it relates to you know media and and video being recorded videotaped everyone have seen has seen this even um in some other countries everyone has yeah. seen this so if it does get you know uh, elevated to a higher court i don't necessarily see it being 100 percent vacated maybe you know we might see less time which will definitely be a loss or insult slap in our face but 100 percent vacated <laughs> man listen, listen, listen. N- nothing surprises me no more with white supremacy peace, man if they want to keep the peace then no way no way they can so they okay can. so what yeah. you just said if they want to keep the peace do you think that judge peter cahill made a decision because of wanting to keep peace and not necessarily because that's what he actually believed Derek chauvin deserved that's a good question because I'm thinking about what you just said. If if yeah. they want to keep the peace, yeah. and I'm thinking, well, is that why Peter Cahill made the decision in terms of the sentencing was because he wanted to keep the peace? Because I that- think yeah, I, I I think him being a judge, I think he you know both sides of you know what what is it blind justice right? Mm-hmm. You have a woman holding the balance beam. I think on both ends of it, I think he wanted to be um, politically politically correct right yeah. and giving of course the people the family what they wanted which was you know mm-hmm. a sentencing and, and a conviction but at the same time seeing that this was an officer of the law seeing that this was you know someone who had quote unquote said that they were going to serve and protect yeah i don't think he gave him the 30 years but yeah. him being merciful. He should have got 30, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, giving giving him the 22. So, you know, I think it was him playing both sides. I don't I don't think he was, you know, egregious or, or one sided in his ruling. But mm-hmm. you know, that, that that comes because of you know the position that he's in. And <laughs> but but yeah. Uh a couple of weeks ago, Juneteenth, um, President Joe Biden decided into law, big thing, uh made history. Um, what what was your reaction? Cause I watched it. I watched the signing of the the mm-hmm. 
uh, the, the bill, the legislation. Um, it was really big. It, it, it was something that uh, it's a milestone for the African American community in particular. Um, I did a, like a, a, a brief post on, on my YouTube page about it, you know, it's expressing or t- saying what it was, the significance of Juneteenth. And mm-hmm. uh, yesterday we had 4th of July. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday did not feel like the 4th of July as it normally would for me. Like it just yeah. felt like another day. And yeah. I felt like in my own opinion, I already had my 4th of July according to my people. You know, mm-hmm. and, and, and what things mean to us, because ultimately, mm-hmm. truth is, uh, the African-American was not free. Frederick Douglass said, what does the 4th of July mean to the slave? And yeah. so many words, not a doggone thing, because we wasn't free. We were right. still enslaved while, right. while uh, our Caucasian brothers and sisters were celebrating their independence from Great Britain. We were still mm-hmm. uh, fighting for our life and fighting for our freedom. And so uh, Juneteenth, even though it's it's kind of specific to Texas, uh, uh, Texas, what is it, Texas? Yeah, yeah Te- Galveston, 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 Texas. Texas. Um, mm-hmm. For others that are not from Texas, we connect with that, that event in time in history because it's like, you know, it, hey, celebrate them because that's a representation that, that represents us. That's for us. That's for all of us. You know, mm-hmm. it's symbolic. Um, and so... <sighs> Juneteenth, I think, is very important. And yeah. then I thought, because I wanted to do a show, you know, as you know, originally about uh, Juneteenth and critical race theory, because I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. And so I say they go hand in hand because, so why, but let me ask you this, why is it that a lot of right wing individuals have an issue with critical race theory? Because, first of all, they say it's, it's taught in schools, but it's not taught in and, and. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely not taught um, in in public schools. It's, it's not taught really um, in any sector of, of our education. Why? Because, of course, education, as we know, is a mainly predominantly patriarchal and hegemonic system of yeah. white supremacy. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Just just think about the nature of an educational system and standardized testing. You know, there's research being done and has been done. Um, over the years as it relates to all of that stuff and how it is still an institution of systemic um, racism and the promotion of white supremacy. But nonetheless, Mm -hmm. as we we digress on this Juneteenth holiday and critical race theory, I think it's for the simple fact that America has not atoned Mm -hmm. for its original sin, right? Yeah. It has not grieved with it. It hasn't given grievances towards... um, it's atonement for its original sin. So to be able to speak about it in schools, in a, you know, in an educational system and to promote or to even just to have conversations surrounding, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, what African-American black and brown people had to go through in this country, man, it it is. I don't I don't think it will ever get to a point where. It will happen, and I'm and I'm thankful for the people who have protested, far as from the educational standpoint, because yeah, I'm a I'm a edu- I, I still call myself an educator. I was in public school system. Um, it mm-hmm. wasn't long, but I, I've been in the public school system, and you know, I feel as though education and my religion um, are the intersex- intersectionality as it relates to what has saved me and what has birthed right. who I today. But I wanted to share. I got I got. A, few books man that i wanted to just yeah highlight. yeah let's yeah. educate our people this is what the show is about you know so you so know what this, i think i want to start doing this start bringing a book a week <laughs> that people can read no seriously because mm-hmm. it, it, these are just a little bit of the books that i got here that i actually do read and so our uh, people need to be able to read because it's good to to see the podcast but you actually need the 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 information and you need the books to read outside of this to help give you context. And and when you have conversations and encountering other people, you're very well versed and educated, not mm-hmm. just in a in a in a generic response, but in actual truth. So, but go ahead. What's, what's the books? Point them out to us. So so this one um, for sure. This is like the precursor. This is like a startup for anybody who wants to understand. You know the whole idea of this country, right? Yeah. Stand from the beginning. It's a you know. Um, it's a I, it's a book 
necessarily received all types of awards. I'm looking at a National Book Award winner, um, author, best-selling New York Times author, all of these things. What about also this one cast as well mm. uh, from Isabel Wilkerson, who talks about, you know, the origins of our discontents. And not only that, but talks about and gets to the breath into the understanding of how we as black people have come to be where we are in America, but also how we can uh, move and really break these institutionalized systems that kind of oppress our people. But yeah. what I'm reading, what I will share right now is what I'm reading right now. And this is an excellent book, How the World, How the Word is Passed um, by Clint Smith. What he's doing in this book is going to different um, historical landmarks, um, plantations, um, different you know, historical landmark. I think what he, what he went to, uh, Monticello, if anybody's mm -hmm. in the D.C., Virginia area, you know yeah. about Monticello being the house of Thomas, Thomas um, Jefferson. Jefferson, right? So yeah. he's going to these places, and it's really just a story of speaking about how our history, our history, meaning American history, mm -hmm. is being passed, right, and being talked about. Yeah. It's not necessarily only about African Americans, but he's he is highlighting that portion. But he's just talking about American history, right? So he interviewing people who speaking about, well, I never even knew Thomas Jefferson had slave. He was a slave owner, but yet he, he had, had, he had on kids the, by a whole slave. It, 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 exactly, exactly, and that's what I and that's what I'm saying, right? These are things that we're finding out that we're learning about outside of school. So mm -hmm. for so for us to think about critical race theory and to think about, OK, what would happen if we're learning about history and government and the president that this information is being highlighted and shared as well? Right. I think, you know, it, it, it would really be a reckoning with our Americanized systems. I think it would be a reckoning with our understanding of America. Right. How we came to even be the pondering. Right. And then, of course, our holidays would, would definitely look different. Like I said, mm -hmm. the 4th of July, we're talking about how it coincides even now today with the 4th of July, right? And us as African-Americans not being 100% counted in into this document of freedom. So, man, th 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 you know, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, um, but I don't ever think we'll get to a point where um, that institution meaning the public school system will ever recognize critical race theory as something that needs to be taught uh shout out to kendra renee she said my youth and young adult pastor i'm assuming y'all know each other <laughs> absolutely absolutely oh okay yeah kendra that that's what that's my sis she <laughs> she she she's off the chain love you kendra um yeah but but uh, she don't know but me and trey we go back to uh, grad school to howard um but you know it's interesting because Critical, and so I, I thought about it. I said, why are they upset about critical race theory? I said, hold up. First of all, you passed Juneteenth, but mm. y'all don't want to talk about critical race theory. Y'all got an issue with it. And it didn't make sense to me because when you talk about Juneteenth, you got to talk critical race theory, right? Okay. Because yeah. you got to explain June, that you done passed it now. You got to explain Juneteenth to people. What is Juneteenth? Why did it happen? Why is it significance? What does that lead to? It talks about slavery of African Americans now. Now you got to talk mm -hmm. about systemic oppression. Now you got to mm -hmm. talk about how white supremacy was a thing. It is still a thing and how it affected a whole group of people. And now you have to really uh, uh, delve into critical race. So a lot of the Republicans that signed for Juneteenth, y'all really kind of, in my opinion, shot yourselves in the foot because <laughs> just the same way you got to talk about July 4th and social studies in, 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 in grade school. Yeah. Yep. Now that you have made this a holiday, you got to, you can't just say Juneteenth and then move on. No, you got to go into detail and talk about Juneteenth. What did it mean? You understand? Mm. And, 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 and why it is a thing. And so now you're kind of forcing it to go from a college level in law school to elementary yep. schools because you have to educate on why Juneteenth is important to our history because now you made it into a law with your dumb selves. So it's like, mm -hmm. uh, not not dumb that, you know, that they shouldn't have did it, but dumb to where you're fighting, you're fighting against the very argument that you're trying to make. Yeah. 
So yeah. it, it, and so that's why it's so important. So of course, as we know, anybody who knows critical race theory is not something that's that's taught anyway in elementary school, middle school, high school. It's taught in law school. You know what I'm saying? And so you learn that in law school because you're learning how the law um, is is manipulated and and used to uh, marginalize. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and affect African Americans or people of color. And so mm-hmm. you think about systemic oppression, systemic racism, uh, uh, the, the, the redlining and all the other kind of stuff. Like yep. these things actually happen. And so you, you have to be able to, have, now you have to have those conversations now because you didn't sign Juneteenth into an actual holiday. Yeah, and I think states are doing um, their best. I would think it, I think it was actually Texas. It's a or Texas or Florida. I think it, it was one of the two um, that you know put out that mandate of you know they don't want any teacher, any student. I mean, any um, school curriculum having any type of racial conversations being yeah. ha- held or had at their schools and and in their states actually. Um, and I just was, you know, kind of taken aback by it because it's one thing to be progressive and want to talk about these things and, you know, want to move on and, and, and really be this great American country that we all have this vision of. And then there's another thing of just not wanting to, you know, as I keep saying, atone or answer mm-hmm. to the simple fact of things that have actually happened. Because now what happens, now you got to, like you said, atone. Now you got to explain why you told the Confederate flag now, right? Mm -hmm. Now you got to explain why um, you have monuments Mm -hmm. to folks, dedicated to folks that were against the very confines of what this nation was founded upon, right? And so now... What it what it does is it puts into question why you do the things that you do, why you support the things you support, right? And so it's it's funny because America is the we the only nation where we celebrate those who tried to kill us and tried to oppress us. It, like like it doesn't make any sense. Why is it that you trying to you celebrate um, somebody that you went to war with and put a monument up for them? It, it, that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, you no don't see sense. you don't see the Jews doing that. You know, you don't see in in, in Germany. No. You don't see that at all. And I be doggone, you ain't gonna see. You know, and you ain't gonna ever see in reality. <laughs> no, no victim of abuse is gonna still be hanging up a picture of their abused lover in their house, in their right mind. You got to be crazy in order to do that, to say, oh, I've come out of this. I've gone through this, but I still got a picture of my abuser that abused me in a relationship for 12, 10, 12, 20 years sitting Unless. in my house. Unless. Unless. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Take, take it away, preacher. Go ahead. Unless Absolutely. what? You know, <laughs> unless at the same time, like, you know, this this whole campaign, this whole push of make America great again, unless you have this conceptualized idea of this is the way it should be right and, you know what we're doing now is completely wrong and and so forth man but i yeah i, I just encourage your listeners um those who, who know us those who are tuned in or who will hear this in the future to really you know just do your research and i understand it it is some gruesome it is some heavy stuff um but it but it needs to be researched it needs to be analyzed it needs to be looked at because it will make you a more better holistic person right Mm -hmm. understanding the things that we as a people have been up against right it's one thing to hear stories it's another thing to actually read these things these official documents right Mm -hmm. from the mouths of some of the people like you said who have been praised who have been lifted to a certain pedestal in, in in our um in our community, in our in our country, so I mean, I just encourage everybody to really just read and, and to you know, just plug plug in, man, plug in and do your research. I think the, the interesting thing is we talk about critical race theory. Um, part as to why some individuals don't want to talk about critical race theory and even deny that it actually exists is now you got to talk about the the dirty laundry of the country. <laughs> because some, there are those who would love to paint this nation as a great nation, and we are so perfect. And uh, but but 
but black history is also American history because it is the oppression of African Americans that mm-hmm. make this nation what it is today. It's on the backs and the sweat and the tears yeah. and the blood and the beatings and the lynchings of African Americans in this nation that make it what it is today. It is because mm-hmm. of the forced labor that we had to endure, that our ancestors had to endure, that made it what it has become. It, honestly, it, you look at a lot of these buildings in downtown Washington, D.C., symbolically and spiritually, mm-hmm. I always say it's the blood of our ancestors that still drip from the confines of those buildings from all of the hard work and all of the tears and all of the fear and all of the oppression that they had to go through just to make those buildings and just to make these things in the name of white supremacy a lot of times and so um it, you know it, we, we our history is american history as african americans and so uh even though it's not always pretty you have to talk about it you can't gloss over um the fact that you enslaved African Americans, you can't gloss over the fact that you took people from their native land and brought them over here to work, and then you beat them and raped them and separated their families and hmm. and did all kind of heinous acts and and you know while um while the the Holocaust was also a, one of the greatest atrocities, um our uh, our Holocaust as a people, um the only difference was it wasn't filmed in real time you know and, mm-hmm. you know and so mm-hmm. and so that's the only difference but nonetheless we also had an atrocity as a people and so we can't forget that and 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 and, and this is why it's important to have these conversations and i think what's going to happen is this new generation the the, the generation that's in in power now like you know the the uh marjorie taylor greens and and mm-hmm. uh and, and all those jokers and, and lindsey grahams i think mm-hmm. the problem with them is they don't want their children their offsprings to be educated on critical race theory because what's going to happen is they're going to start questioning them and challenging their challenging them on their mm-hmm. beliefs and their ideologies yeah. because of this new learned education and this new learning of uh, uh systematic oppression and systematic racism and you know and and, and it's interesting because i think about people like you know candace owens and and, and, I, and mm-hmm. I and i just scratch my <laughs> head because i'm like how how yeah, like yeah. And, and so now whether whether she wants to admit in that she she just had a baby you know god bless her, she had a baby she's able to bring life into the world but you're you're raising whether you want to admit it or not even though daddy's white you have a child who is going to be a child of color and I, I... yeah yeah let's see if some of those principles that you know that you've been living by or guarding by the, do they still stand with your own you know with your own child but I do, I do love this, this, this idea in this conversation, right? Because what happens next is this conversation about reparations, right? Yes. Right, and and that's and that's exactly what it moves to, right? And mm-hmm. I think that is, um, the 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 big takeaway, the mm-hmm. big takeaway, and what they kind of maybe that's why they have been holding on for so long of not even acknowledging. Mm-hmm. you know pain the hurt the suffering that in which they caused mm-hmm. um because there's always been this idea that african americans were would retaliate that that has always been this idea the fear. We them, yeah that they, we can't let them get into power because they will do to us what we've what done we did to, to them, them. It, 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 that is that is the greatest um the greatest thing in which they fear right yeah, and we have shown that no, it's not even that, right? We're resilient people. We we've, we've learned how to we turn ain't got time the other for that. <laughs> that that too, right? That too. We have so many other things that's going on, but nonetheless, when we are now at the table, we want to talk about reparations. We want to talk about how do we make this right? And while mm-hmm. you know we are celebrating that it has been indoctrinated as a federal holiday, mm-hmm. of course, it's not enough. It it is it is definitely not enough. Uh, Brad, yeah. Of course, everybody knows knows about the tweet by now. You know that that talks about uh, it being a federal holiday, and I think a, a brother said something like, "Man, white people getting off on a black holiday don't sit right with me," or something like that. <laughs> uh, getting paid for a black holiday don't sit right for me. So I mean, you know that that's that's the next step. I think I think um, what is it, what is, what's the bill called? I think it's on the floor now. I think it's like the forty. Um, I can't remember what it is. Yeah, yeah, but 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 there's a bill on the floor to talk about reparations. Um, so yeah, 
that is like I said, do our research. You have to be careful. Yeah. Like this is even though we got the Juneteenth holiday, you can't be content because that's what they want you to be is content. Yeah. Y'all got Juneteenth. Now we gotta do do you know give you something else like. Let's give them that. Shut them up for a while, and see. Mm-hmm. That's that's part of you that's know part of- that that's part of the issue that um, Lyndon Johnson had with MLK, right? He's a, we just passed the Civil Rights the Act and the Voting yep. Right, the Voting Rights Act. Mm-hmm. I think it was of '64. Then the Civil Rights Act came the following mm-hmm. year. Yep. You know, like you asking for too much, and so King is like, "No, I don't care what y'all passed last year. We we got a whole plate." You know, yep. we, it don't it don't stop with the Voting Rights Act of 1964 or what have you. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't stop with the Civil Rights Act, and so mm-hmm. there's so much more that we're fighting for. That's just that's just the foot in the door. Like that, just because you gave us that, we supposed to be content and shut up because you gave us that. And, mm-hmm. then, and why? Because because now we putting pressure on you. That means you got to put pressure on Congress. That means you got to make more speeches now. Absolutely, do you your doggone job. Skippy. Do, right. That's why we put you yeah. in office. Do your doggone job, you know. Mm-hmm. And and that's the same energy that we have to keep in twenty twenty one. A lot of us with our politicians in our respective jurisdictions, because the reality is, Dr. King was a was a frequent visitor in the White House. You know, he was yep. very frequent. He went up in there, met. And and, and, and and made his demands and said, this is what we want. These are the bills we want passed. There was an agenda, right? And so... Yeah. It, well, both it, presidents, it, at, 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 for that matter. For both Kennedy presidents. And Lyndon B. Yeah. Both presidents. Like, he went back in there and, 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 you know, he had his bouts with, with Lyndon Johnson, you know, like going to going back and forth. And, and King saying, like, do you want to be known in history as an individual who wasn't helping out the poor man, the, the African-American or what have you? And, and King Child them and held them accountable and you know in their own conversations you know um and so we have to keep that same energy in 2021 don't just vote your politicians in it's great that you vote them in but hold them accountable it's great that you got them in but okay are they going to honor what they said are they going to hold them account but not only hold them account you have to make sure you give them an agenda to work with because it makes no sense to just vote them in and you expect them to do things just because you know, you exist, you got to give somebody an agenda mm-hmm. and say, this is what I voted you in for. And this is what you need to do. This is the things we need to pass for for our people. And and that's the same energy, you know, that we have to keep, man. We got to keep that same energy. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, absolutely. I don't think it, it, it definitely shouldn't stop. Um, and, and shout out to the people, I mean, because we do have to praise them and just celebrate them for coming out in trolls and numbers yes. um, as it relates to these past few elections. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it, it doesn't stop. Um, and this is why I still speak about this generation, man, because mm-hmm. this, this generation um, has shown and proved the ability of why they are so critical about things, because they are doing their research. They are showing up. They are being a part um, but like you said, it don't it doesn't stop there. Like we need more. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Um, and one of the greatest things that I, I, I pass on to people is some of the things that we are pressing to get done, pressing to get um, acknowledged and commemorated. We may never even see them. So mm-hmm. we 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 have to we have to be humble. We have to be um, able to realize that some of these things that we are doing. I may never even get to see, but it's for my grandkids. It's for my great, great grandkids. It's for, yeah. you know, the generations that come after us. And I mm-hmm. think I think that once we start, of course, to love ourselves and understand that it's not just for us right now, but it's for the future. Man, I, I, I think that's something we can all get behind and kind of help try to move forward. Mm. Yeah, a- absolutely. We have to always think about the generation ahead of us uh, and, you know, behind us. And, and think about are we doing what we have to do to make sure that they have a torch or a baton mm-hmm. to pick up because mm-hmm. we have a baton passed to us in many different rights and respectives but we have to be able to make sure that we're passing something that they can continue to build on generational wealth uh is not just having a house to pass down but that generational wealth of knowledge generational wealth of the strength and the tenacity and the audacity to be able to affect change and affect legislation do you have that kind of baton and that kind of mantle to pass on to the next generation so that they can pick up with their youthfulness and their energy to pick up and and hit the ground running and to continue what it is that you started 
uh, because ultimately each generation is doing nothing but building on the shoulders of the generation before them. Before, yep. And, and, and so we have to make sure that now we are millennials, we, we're approaching our thirties, uh, the last, you know, millennials <laughs> that we hit in our thirties now. And so yeah. we are approaching that middle age where we are the new leaders. We are the new teachers and preachers and pastors and bishops and apostles and, and all of this kind of wonderful stuff. And so we have, batons being passed down because the generation before us they're getting up in age they're retiring they're preparing us as they should be uh to pass things down to us and we have to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to pick up those mantles and pick up these batons and to yeah. and to function and to work and to do with us say the lord whatever that uh realm of a of, uh, 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 track field in your life, whatever that may be. That may be the political area. That may be the the, the environmental justice or social justice or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. We mm -hmm. have to make sure that whatever it is, we are doing our part. And so also that's why we're doing our part right here on Timothy Volume Podcast. And, and we're having it. these kind of conversations. And even though Brother James couldn't get on, uh, we're going to follow up with him, see, see if everything good with him. But nonetheless, we always have a good conversation. This is the manhood panel. This is what we talk about. We come and we talk about <laughs> any and everything. Y'all, listen, do me a favor and uh, follow me on Twitter at Deontay J. Carroll uh, right there. Also, follow me at Deontay J. Carroll Sr. on Facebook. Um, listen, y'all, Trey, I don't know if you've been following, but my YouTube been blowing up, man. I, oh, yeah. My YouTube been blowing up. I think I met uh, 158, 59 subscribers now. Okay. And uh, uh, one of my videos is is like 3K views and and the st and you know the stuff that we didn't did last week uh with two weeks ago with with Dr Turner that and kicked off and then picked up some views and uh uh I, I didn't tell you I didn't tell you with James this uh so next week next week I'm going to do a special edition of the of my visit to the King Center in ATL and uh, the week mm -hmm. after that uh, watch this the week after that I don't know if you heard about this uh, uh, Jane, uh, Trey uh, but Michael C Bender he is the author who works with the Wall Street Journal he wrote the book mm. frankly we did win this election the inside story of how Trump lost um, and and I think a week or two ago he picked up a lot of traction on like CNN and different news stations where he talked about um, the, some of the things that Trump said about in terms of uh, uh, cracking the skull was open of African American protesters of the Black Lives Matter protesters and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. stuff is in his. I don't know if you. I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, Trey, but he will be on the twenty second of July, um, and we're going to be talking about his book and and we're going to have like a thirty minute conversation. So we're looking forward to that conversation, and uh, we got some some things lined up. Some people that we have. Uh, that we're trying to reach out to coming on and so we're just gonna that's keep going good. up 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 and up you know and yes, so y'all do me a favor follow us on social media i don't know trey i can't even find trey on social media only time <laughs> i see trey is when he come on the show <laughs> only time i man, see trey listen is... listen i'm gonna I'm 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 tell you about that really quickly man yeah so, yeah go like right right when we you know you, you reached out to me and extended all of these invitations to be on your show like probably i want to say a few weeks before like i literally like took a took a break from social media in me taking a break from social media i loved it so much man i said you know what i'm, I'm just going to delete my social media so honestly you know I'm, I'm wherever the people are but you know they they, they can't reach me on social media man <laughs> look i'm gonna have to change your lower thirds now because I, I i found myself going back and said did he delete his social media and i yeah, never stopped to ask yeah. i said he ain't even on social media no more so we gotta just go and change your lower third and just put trade down you down there because you ain't got no social media so people yeah, can't even get in yeah. contact with you where you are email uh, email they get email with old school <laughs> What's your email so they know how to get in contact with you? All right. It's at, of course, well, it's, it's trey.daniel at uh -huh. ymail.com. Trey.daniel.daniel at ymail.com. Yep. All right. Yes, All right. So, so, so nonetheless, this is the Manhood Panel. This is uh, Turn Up the Volume Podcast. And uh, even though it was just you and I, I had a ball, man. I always have a ball yeah, when I, I get together with y'all. Uh, look, look, you, you, you've been on, your brother been on one time. You, you've been on way, <laughs> way more than Rudy. And look, I tried to get Rudy cut back. He ain't never responded to my text, uh, but, but we gonna get Rudy back over here. Um, but, but nonetheless, we doing some awesome things. Y'all look forward. Y'all look for the show next week. Um, special edition. That's going to be hot. Uh, the following week, I think, yeah, the following week 
if I'm not mistaken, that is the following week. Look out for the other interview with Michael C. Bender. Yep. We're going to be doing that. Um, so it's just some some wonderful things that we're doing, man, that we're trying to, trying to do, trying to empower our community. We talk to any and everybody. The Lord is opening up some doors. And, you know, with this platform that I have, and it's it's it's, it's going up, as, they, as the old school songs say, which way is up? And so we're going all the way up. <laughs> All the way up. Uh, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, uh, we love y'all. Be easy. Be good. Take care of yourselves. There's so much going on out here. Don't let nobody take your voice from you. And do me a favor, y'all. Whatever you do, whatever you got to say, do me a favor and just say it with your chest. All right? I'm Deontay Carroll. Y'all be good. Trey, hold on for a half second. You know how we do. Let's go and close that show out. I'm Deontay Carroll. i see y'all next week. Be good. Turn up the volume. Hey, I'm Nadja. I'm DJ. Hey, I'm Seth. And you watching? And you watching? And you're watching. Turn up the volume. And turn up the volume. Turn up the volume. Turn up. Turn up. Hit the wall, Seth. Put the pause. Hey, hey, what's happening? This is Deontay Carroll, host of Turn Up the Volume Podcast. And listen, I want to let y'all know something. You can follow us on many different platforms. You can follow me on Facebook at Deontay J. Carroll Senior. You can also follow me on Twitter at Deontay J. Carroll. No apostrophe. Also, I'm on Instagram at Deontay Carroll. All one word, no apostrophe. And lastly, you want to follow me on YouTube at Deontay Carroll because I post all of my episodes and post all of my shows from the podcast on my YouTube page. So if you want to continue to stay connected, make sure you like, share, and subscribe and follow me on all of my social media platforms. And remember, until next time, keep that volume turned up. Peace. Be blessed.